she looked at the uh, number of people who are coming to uh, uh, peaceful protests, who are coming to peaceful movement, attest to the fact that um, people are more willing, willing to I mean, uh, have a say in this entire process. This is not all about who is going to be in power, who will be winner, who will be, who will be loser. This is about Nepali people once again becoming sovereign. This is about Nepali people deciding for themselves. And if we not, if we not all come together as citizens of, citizens of this country and make our own contribution to this cause, we will not be able to achieve it. There are good signs that people of all strata in, this, in our country are now convinced that they should make a contribution to this cause. And the day when we will have this is not too far away from today. Some of the biggest mistake we made was we all took democracy for granted. We are so fierce to criticize each other. At times, at times, we even used measures that probably are not justified in a, in a democratic society to stay in power. Well, I am ready and willing to take my share of blame, my party's share of blame, and uh, share of blame of all political parties together for things that we are not able to do. global audience uh, who do not know anything about political movement of Nepal. So can you please say what is going in Nepal? Uh, this fight is to restore peace and democracy in the country. Uh, the current regime uh, is very much uh, bent on continuing uh, the violent conflict. Violent conflict has provided a pretext for this regime to continue for longer. And that's the reason why I mean, uh, they have been harping on uh, the news of conflict, but I mean they are scared when uh, even uh, Maoist when they talk about a peaceful resolution to the problem. Mm -hmm. What is the main of this political movement? What is your end? Main? Uh, one of the things I mean that we all have to understand is the constitution of Nepal, the basic principles there, first pass post system, electoral system, and the way I mean power has, uh, has been divided among different units of the government. I mean, a, a country with a similar uh, constitution uh, have done wonders. Uh, that has worked well because uh, in those countries, I mean, you see uh, a society is pretty much uh, homogenous in terms of economic stature, in terms of uh, uh, identity, religious, otherwise ethnic, uh, uh, language identity. Uh, uh, but in countries which is which has lots of diversity, like uh, like ours, for example, I mean. Uh, we are a heterogeneous society, heterogeneous society ba uh, based on uh, language, based on culture, based on ethnicity, uh, based on religion. In a society like ours, a state mechanism can, uh, uh, can be permanent and can cater to the needs of uh, every sector of the society only when uh, it, is, uh, it has representation as white uh, and as, as heterogeneous as the, as the uh, country itself is. And one of the things that has been said about the present constitution is this works well in, a, in an homogeneous society, but in an heterogeneous society like ours, the constitution should have provisions such that all identities are represented uh, in, in this um, um, apparatus of the state. And this is something we are trying to achieve. Well, let, let me backtrack a bit and then uh, digress a bit here. I had an opportunity to talk to uh, John Hume. John Hume who was leader of uh, SDLP in Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. uh, who was instrumental in uh, establishing uh, peace in Northern Ireland, bringing two uh, conflicting parties together, and who was awarded Nobel Prize for his contribution. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an opportunity to talk to him, and a question was asked to him, and then the question was, uh, Nepal also has a constitution which is pretty much pattern after the British constitution. Do you think uh, a constitution, British constitution is appropriate for Nepal? Mm -hmm. And then he, he said uh, that I mean, he, was, he was not too familiar about Nepal's situation. I mean, uh, British constitution has worked wonders for Britain, but in a heterogeneous society like Northern Ireland is, uh, that system is not good. Mm -hmm. uh, we, Northern Ireland has devised a system where all identities are represented in the structure of the state. And then he, he told us, I mean, 
he did not know much about Nepal, but if Nepal also is heterogeneous society, it will have to find its own answers. And then uh, I asked him, uh, asked him a follow-up question. Then how do you go about doing it? How do you decide that what is the best uh, apparatus of the structure, apparatus of the state uh, would be for Nepal? Then I mean, uh, the answer he gave, I mean, it's a very important answer, but not uh, literally. Uh, the answer he gave that I'm not saying that we should follow the answer literally but I'm trying to say here is the, the, the spirit that's there I mean it was wonder, uh, wonderful I mean then, then let's try to learn something from there he told us I mean why don't you do this I mean do two rounds of election in the first round you'll ask every Nepali what is your identity mm -hmm. and then when you ask every individual about his or her identity they will give you the identity they think is the most vulnerable one I mean, a, a, a woman who is a Dalit is from Tarai region, probably will say she is a, a Madesi Dalit because I mean, that's a very vulnerable identity. Uh, someone who lives in a uh, very remote, just, uh, remote area of the country probably will say, I am from Karnali. Karnali's development is very important for me. Some people will first I mean, reveal their identity. And then he goes, in the second round, you uh, you divide the constitution so that every identity of the nation would be represented in the legislature. Every identity of nation would be represented in the government. I mean, the idea is very useful. I'm not saying that Nepal has to go through two rounds of election. But what I'm trying to imply here is, I mean, we should, we should find answers for ourselves. And that answer should be such that every identity in Nepal feels that it's represented. I mean, one of, one of the cornerstones of Westminster system is you have to have a very strong ruling party and almost equally strong opposition party to us. So that's an adversarial system of democracy. We thought I mean, that, that, that's the basic definition of democracy. And when we say the constitution of 1990 is the best constitution in the world, we said that because of our poor knowledge. We thought democracy should, should, uh, can only be adversarial. There are many other countries in the world where government, governance itself is based on consensus. But every party is represented. Most of the identities are represented. And they, 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 uh, they will try to find a policy that, that appeals to broad spectrum of the society. Uh, well, is that not what Nepal should try to do? I mean, if you ask me, I feel so. I mean, we do not need an adversary, strong adversarial system, but I mean, so they have, a, have to have a governor, go, governance structure where, I mean, everybody will voice their opinion and will try to, I mean, uh, among diversity, will try to find an answer that's, that's agreeable to uh, all of them. We'll try to find minimum, minimum point on which uh, nation as a whole can converge. So should we not, not do something of that sort? And I feel very strongly that I mean, we should do that. And that's the reason why we've been saying that uh, if we, if we uh, hold election for constituent assembly, then we can find uh, solutions that are appropriate for Nepal's situation. Uh, in your uh, opinion, what is the key factor? Do you call it key to take action against uh, democracy? The pretext is violence. What King said, immediately after October 4, 2002 uh -huh. and immediately after February 1, 2005 is uh -huh. country is marred by violence. Uh -huh. Unless Nepal is peaceful once again, uh -huh. we cannot have unfettered democratic exercise. Uh -huh. So for, uh, for Nepal has to wait for a little while for democracy uh -huh. but can have that peace immediately. Uh -huh. And that's the promise uh, with this king uh -huh. assert power. It's almost been a year now, what has happened? Mm -hmm. Peace has become even remote. And we have been telling this to Maoist that the violence has become the pretext for this, uh, this regime. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we are talking to them, trying to convince them that, I mean, if, if they renounce violence, if they, they uh, promise to people of Nepal that they will abide by the decision Nepali people will take, based on their conscience in an environment that's free of intimidation and fear. And if they agree to, uh, agree to accept that verdict of Nepali people, then king's pretext to stay in power, king's authoritarian regime's pretext to stay in power will, not, will no longer be there. And that's the reason why we are trying to uh, uh, develop an understanding uh, within, within which peaceful political solutions is possible. And if we do not do that, 
as representatives of people of Nepal, will be failing in our responsibility. Uh, will be failing in our accountability to people of Nepal. So our, res our prime responsibility is to find a way, find political parameter within which peaceful solution is possible, within which democracy can be back in this country. And we have we have made it public, and we have now asked the current regime, uh, current state, to agree because there is room, ample room for every every actor in the understanding that we have reached with the Maoist. The king says that the democracy in the 1990s is failed. Do we agree or not? No. Democracy has not failed anywhere in the world. Give me one example where democracy has failed. Democracy, the thing is, power corrupts Power is corrupt in every society. I mean, what will, uh, what, will the, uh, what will the power do? Will not abide by the law? Will try to impose its own will? Will not be willing to listen? Will is not willing to listen to others? Will try to impose its own uh, way uh, upon a large mass? For us, it's not a fight to prove that kings bad, we are good. Kings should be out, seven political parties should be in. This is not what it's all about. What is it all about is to establish a system where Prime Minister has to be accountable first to its cabinet, mm -hmm. Council of Ministers. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister and Council of Ministers should be accountable to the legislature. Mm -hmm. Legislature and executive should be accountable to judiciary. Mm -hmm. Judiciary, I mean, if they go beyond the, beyond the uh, power granted through division of uh, power, if executive and legislature go beyond that, judiciary will stop them. If the, even three organs of the state, that's not sufficient. I mean, if they go beyond that, there would be a uh, public service commission, there would be uh, a state apparatus like constitutional organ, like uh, commission on in the, uh, investigating abuse of authority, uh, 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 rules to uh, control corruption. There will be many other, an election commission to oversee that elections are fair. I mean, and and that's not even sufficient. Then, then you go to the people. There are institutions of people. I mean, there are civil society. There are uh, journalists. There are people uh, organized in different uh, groups, different professions. And every individual Nepali should have the right to say, "Well, my president, my prime minister, I elected you. Elected you, but you are not doing what I thought you would do. You have not been accountable." Every Nepali should have that right. In King's regime, King decides for the rest of Nepali people. In a regime that we are saying, in democracy, people of Nepal will be, will be sovereign to decide on uh, things. And not only that they cast their vote, even between elections, they can raise their uh, uh, voice and then say, well, this simple, I would not simply accept. They can go to the court. They can go to election commission. Mm -hmm. They can go to uh, 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 commissions for uh, corruption of control. Mm -hmm. They can go to public service commission. Mm -hmm. They can go to media. They can go to other non-governmental organizations mm -hmm. and raise their voice. We and so this this fight is to establish that. This fight is to establish rule of law. Mm -hmm. This fight is to establish is all about establishing human rights, fundamental rights in the country. This is not about replacing one set of individuals by another set of individuals. Mm -hmm in uh, democratic period. Are we agree or not? Yes, I guess um, the biggest mistake we made was we all took democracy for granted. Uh -huh. And it's not only political parties. Everybody in the society took democracy for granted. Uh -huh. Look, we are severely criticized by this, were we not? Yeah. Many times, uh -huh. unjustifiably so also. Uh -huh. Many times justifiably and many other times unjustifiably. Uh -huh. But every individual in this country thought uh -huh. democracy is going to stay here. And because democracy is going to stay here, it's my responsibility mm -hmm. as a civil society uh, organization, as a civil society member, mm -hmm. to to make government accountable to people. Mm -hmm. And we, press was pretty pretty fierce in criticizing political leaders uh -huh. because it assumed that democracy is going to stay here. Mm -hmm. Political parties also we we took democracy for granted. We are so fierce to criticize each other. At times, at times we even used measures that probably are not justified in a, in a democratic society to stay in power. But I guess the basic premise with which all, all of us were guided was, was democracy is going to stay here and this is the process that's going to that's correct uh, the uh, uh, problems 
that are there in the society. That's number one. And second, we also have to think about this. No society, in no society, a leader is more progressive than its political party. And no political party is more progressive than the society that it intends and purports to lead. So, I mean, political parties cannot be way behind rest of the society or way ahead of rest of the society. So, I guess on here, I am ready and willing to take my share of blame, my party's share of blame, and uh, share of blame of all political parties together for things that we are not able to do. For, because, uh, for things that we are not able to do, uh, for uh, downtrodden, marginalized people of Nepal, I take their grievances uh, as very genuine, very positive. But at the same time, it's the entire society that, ha that will have to rise up to the occasion. If the society cannot be very vigilant, then political leaders will not be accountable to people. Always have to be vigilant. Democracy is not about finding the best person and letting him run the country in the way he thinks is most appropriate. Democracy is about electing leaders and keeping them accountable throughout the period between elections and then if people do not like him, changing him through the democratic means. <laughs> धन्यवाद